so you want remote start on your car. Well, today we're going to be teaching you how to do that. Now, I've had the chaser um, away for the past couple of weeks because I've been installing this Viper alarm system and I want to show you guys pretty much exactly how to do it. Um, we have another car that we'll be installing an alarm on today and that is Mr. Nathan's car, the S15. Now, yes, to get remote start, you will need an alarm system. This tutorial is only going to really cover the Viper alarm system, but I'm sure that you can apply some of this knowledge to uh, all the other systems that are out there. It's a little bit complicated, but if you stay and watch to the end, you'll pretty much get the hang of what exactly you need to do. Now, boys, you want to make sure that you never, ever abuse a customer's car. Just kidding, it's my mate's car. Hello, my name's Nathan. So here's the Viper Alarm box. I pretty much have everything unboxed because Nathan's been preparing it for the install. So what I'm gonna do firstly is link a video that explains every single one of these wires before you watch this video. And what that allows you to do is prepare the harness for install. So there's a bunch of cables that you don't actually need. So uh, Nathan's actually gone ahead and started Teflon taping the wires up that we don't need. It's gonna make the install a whole lot cleaner and a lot easier to manage. So make sure you go watch this video and go see exactly what wires you need for first before watching this video. Anyway, in the box we have this harness which has a bunch of different functions. So let's just say someone goes and breaks into your car and they press like a AC button, you can make it so that it triggers the alarm. We also have this which is the antenna wire. So this is what's gonna communicate um, with your remote. We have the remote start harness which is of course is extremely important if you want your car to remote start. We also have this which is like the main sort of power ground parking light wire and all that that good stuff. It also comes with a motion sensor. So if there's any sort of vibration in your car, then it's gonna trigger the alarm. Now we call this the brain of the system. This essentially controls everything. So all the wires plug into here, extremely important. Door unlock and lock harness. We also have a siren somewhere. Yep, a siren right here. Now you have two key fobs. One of them is a two-way and one of them is a one-way. So this two-way is the most important one. So you want this on you at all times because when the car gets broken into, it actually signals on here and it tells you from far away. So if you're away from your car, it'll go meow, 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 and it'll tell you, <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> It'll tell you exactly what your car's doing. So let's just say that uh, the thief breaks into your car, opens the door, it'll start alarming you and saying that the door is open. So very important. And this one is just a spare that you wanna keep hidden around just in case I guess you lose this one. So currently I've got a bunch of different activations. So the hood pin's activated. So if anyone opens the hood when they try to steal the car, it's gonna sound the alarm. And I've also got the doors. If they open, it'll sound the alarm. And if they go in and they press the brake, it'll sound the alarm. Another beautiful thing about this alarm is that it also, of course has an immobilizer. So the starter wires that start your car run through the alarm and when you arm the car, it disables the starter entirely. So there is no chance someone's gonna stick a screwdriver in there and turn the key. You're actually gonna have to muck around the wiring to steal your car. And if they manage to steal your car at that point, they deserve it, like. <laughs> Now, one of the fun things of installing one of these alarms yourself, especially on a car like this heavily molested 90s Japanese hunk of junk um, that should be in, at the wreckers, um, is that when you do a bit of automotive archeology, span you find some very interesting stuff. So unfortunately, hopefully in your situation, you're not gonna have any of this crap in the way. So I'm gonna assume that you're starting off with a fresh platform that hasn't been touched, but in this case, you might have to do some digging around to get rid of essentially everything that's aftermarket. So this crap, what the hell? We're gonna get rid of all the aftermarket wires that we don't need. We do have to be a little bit careful though, because there is some wiring for the power of C this thing has installed. To do this properly, you do want yourself some heat shrink or this on eBay for like five bucks. You do want some wire strippers. This will make your life a whole lot easier. You'll need some cutters, soldering iron to do this properly and solder, of course, to work with the soldering iron. Heat gun, also pretty necessary or a lighter if you wanna shrink up this heat shrink. And yeah, let's, let's begin. I 
I placed some zip ties around each bunch of wires, um, each group. You can see this one as well. A bunch of zip ties, just so I can distinguish between the two and there's not wires just flopping around everywhere. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect up our test light. Here's our test light. So we can prod this around and we can see if there's power or we can ground something out. Um, we have it attached just up there on a ground, as you can see, that's connected to the chassis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna prod around and we're gonna see if we can figure out what opens and closes the doors. So I've actually done this already because the previous alarm that we had in there was wired in. So I could just look down and see where it was wired in. And if I go ahead and I prod these thingos, see that? So the green locks the door. I don't know if you just heard that. Let's see if I can show you, but the blue opens the doors. So all you need to do is just ground them out and test them. So we have blue opening and green closing. On the sheet of paper, it says we have blue unlock and green lock as well. So we're just gonna wire in essentially these, these wires and connect it up to the alarm. So it's gonna be hard to show you guys, but I have actually wired in the door switches. Um, there you go. But now we are going to go to the six pin harness and we're gonna do all the wiring for the six pin harness. So the first thing we're gonna do is the ground. The black on the six pin harness is apparently the ground. So I have a little connector on here. So we're just gonna tie that down to the ground now. Just a 10 mil up there where the test light is on. And we're just gonna keep following the process for all these wires. Okay, so now I've bolted down the ground from the alarm box and I've also connected up the 12 volt power supply which is the red wire and the six pin to a 12 volt on the car. So technically speaking right now, if we do press this, it should lock and unlock the car. We also have this, which is the antenna wire. So this is what's gonna communicate um, with your remote. Sick. Look at that. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so we've jumped ahead quite a bit and I've got the ground all wired up. It's uh, just on a 10 millimeter bolt just back there. We have our siren and parker light just chilling here and we have begun to start wiring in the main harness. So I'll quickly show you what I've done. We have our green wire going to the starter input from the key. We have our violet wire going to the starter output. So you actually have to chop this wire. The rest of the wires you don't need to chop. We have our constant power, our red wires. So that includes all the red wires. So three red wires from the main harness and you've got the red uh, wire coming off the six pin harness. So four wires total going to a 12 volt constant. Um, we have our accessory wire. We don't need to use this black and pink and this white and pink because the car doesn't have ignition to outputs. So we're just gonna pretty much tie these up. I'm gonna start Teflon taping all these wires and we will get back to you. Now we have stepped quite ahead again and I've decided to start Teflon taping the rest of the wiring harness up. And the next thing we need to do is work on the 24 pin harness. Um, there's only a few different wires that you need from this harness and I've essentially got them all bundled up, bundled up from here. So there's only about uh, six wires that we're going to be using from this. If you come over here and look at the table, uh, you can see exactly which wires that we do need to use and which wires that we don't. You can see they're marked with an asterisk and a double asterisk. All these wires, if you followed that video, uh, they can do a bunch of other little different things. Like there's a bunch of different functions. So if you press the remote a certain amount of times, you can have certain different little third party things activate or you can you know, press it enough times to make your dome light activate. But we're not gonna be mucking around with that. We're only just gonna try get remote start working and the main function of the alarm working. So it'll immobilize itself. It'll lock the doors, unlock the doors and all that the main stuff essentially. You can go above and beyond with these Viper alarms and really make them uh, suit your personal usage. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we're not really going to that standard. So I'll just quickly briefly explain this 24 pin harness and what we're gonna be using on it. Just then untangle it. So we have our black and white, which is our parking brake output. So we're gonna put that to the parking brake. We have a green is a negative door input. We have a violet with white. That is our tachometer input. We have a brown with black, which is a horn honk output. So, so this will sound the horn when the alarm is being triggered. A gray wire, which is a hood pin, I believe. And a brown wire, which is a brake shutdown. So with this car, you only need either the green wire or the violet wire for the uh, door triggers. You're gonna have to do some research for your car. In this case, we only use the green wire, which is a negative door input. Essentially what that means is the door gives off a ground slash negative input when the doors have been opened. So that will trigger the alarm. Alright, we have 
the brake trigger all set up and we have the horn honk output set up, the brown and black wire. Um, I'll quickly show you a demonstration of how I'm actually finding some of these wires. So we got my handy test light over here. I know for a fact this is a brake input wire because I've already tested it, but currently there is no voltage going to it. You can see the test light's not turning on. However, if I hold that on the brake wire and if I push the brake, can see the test light is turning on which indicates that the that is the brake input wire and we are now going to go route the tachometer wire so we need to have this wire go all the way back up to the tachometer to sense for a signal what Lachlan and I did was look at some of the wiring diagrams for the s15s and we, we found that where'd you find them on the forums yeah so we found them on the forums and we figured out which wire moves with throttle inputs so as we rev the engine the wire changes in voltage and that's the wire you want to look for because that tells the alarm when the car is on and running and that will stop your starter from going when you do the remote start okay time for some testing so we've now wired up the hood pin and also the siren as well i've just got this all twisted up right here to test it um we're using this hood pin that came with nathan's car but the kit actually does come with its own pin so we're going to test to see if it works and and of course, we've also wired the siren all properly and it's all routed down into the cabin. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lock the car, then I'm going to let go of the hood. And if it sounds the alarm, we Gucci. And Lachlan's putting his hands on his ears because... It's very loud. <laughs> yeah, because we've got it so that the horn works right now. So... You ready? Okay, it's very complicated looking at this right now, so it's going to be hard to sort of explain what's going on because we've done a whole lot of cleaning up from all the third-party aftermarket stuff. But uh, essentially, what I've done is I've routed all the cables um, and I've heat shrinked everything and also um, also taped everything up so this is the main harness I still need to tape some of this stuff up if you want to get the indicators to work and flash both at the same time you will need a relay it's a little bit complicated and I'm not really gonna try explain it um, because it's it's a pain in the ass <laughs> but that's just to get your indicator lights to work when you press the remote so I'll demonstrate that for you so if I press this you can see indicator lights work and there you go, they both flash at the same time. That's pretty complicated to do. If you are confused about anything on this install, I'm gonna try help as much as possible. So leave a comment down below and I'll try to reply. It's uh, it's definitely a process that's gonna take at least a week if you're beginning to do this yourself. It's actually taken me a couple days, even with the help of Lachlan, because um, just of, of all the other stuff we had to clean up. But. We've even gone ahead and wired up the horn wire. Um, we had to locate that. And what you do is essentially um, you just keep prodding around with this until your horn goes off. And we found that here. If you ground the horn out, it will go off. So we've got the hood pin wire, which is gray. Brake sensing wire, which is the brown and black. Show you what this thing looks like when it's all packed up and uh, nice and clean in here. But it's a bit of a mess right now. <laughs> okay, we are pretty much done. I'm going to demonstrate some of the remote start features and how to use it all. Uh, when you first get the remote start key, you're going to have to go through a programming process when you've done all the wiring and all that. I'll just explain what the buttons are, but you've got the, the remote start button there, you've got the function button, unlock, and you also have the control center button um, where you've routed that. This little button on the actual uh, responder right there. So what you'll have to do to remote start your car is program the alarm into uh, manual mode if you have a manual transmission and that will allow you to start your car if you've done all the wiring correct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this button and it should start the car. This thing's on a bit of a tune, so it didn't remote start first go. We'll give it another go. The car is also running on ethanol, that's why it's a little bit harder to start, but you can go ahead and program in the remote, uh, setting the starter to run a little bit longer than normal. So you can set it, I think, by increments of 0.2 seconds. So you can have it start a little bit longer and it will definitely start up your car. You just gotta play around with it. We still got a lot of work to do. We still need to put the door cards on and everything, but I think Nathan's gonna be really happy. And of course, if you have any sort of questions, make sure you let me know in the comments down below, because I'm happy to answer as many as I possibly can. So with the car remote started, let's just say you have it locked. It's unlocked right now, but if you do have it locked, 
If someone managed to get into the car, it would immobilize the car and sound the alarm because it is locked. Um, and it will also shut down your car as well. So if you've got a remote started, you don't need to worry too much. Another safety thing as well is if the uh, robbers have managed to get in the car while it's remote started and they do not have the key and they put their foot on the brake, the car will shut down because there is no key and there is no reason why this thing should drive away. I highly recommend going on YouTube and looking up exactly what the Viper Alarm can do because there's plenty of different functions on this remote. I'm also show you what the car sounds like when the alarm goes off. So you can trick the alarm into going off by holding the lock button. Um, it's gonna sound the whole alarm, so get your ears ready, boys. And then to stop it, you just press the unlock button. But all works, it's all good to go. I think Nathan's gonna be very, very happy. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And again, if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try to get back to as many comments as possible. It's a bit of a process and it's gonna take you a long time to install your first alarm if you're first doing one. This video was filmed over a few days, so if it's a little bit confusing, that's all good. Just hit me up in the comments. But thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.